Hello guys, I'm Rebel and welcome back to Anybody Can Code Python series. Today, we'll be discussing one of the main collection types, lists. But before that, let's understand what a collection is. Well, a collection is nothing but a group of related data. For example, in a college database, the details of a student can be considered as a collection and also the details of a staff member can be considered as a collection. We can perform any manipulations over this collection using the collection data types. So let's look at how to do it. So now let's consider a mark list of the student. mark list is equal to let's give some five marks of the student as we have already discussed in one of our previous tutorials list can be considered as a collection of different types of data enclosed within square brackets and also they are termed as mutable data types because the elements of a list can be changed after it has been created. Now let's see how to insert elements in a list. Mark list dot insert of first we have to specify the index value. So here I'll give one and I'll specify the department of the student and then print the list. So now let's run this. So the department CSE got inserted in the first index. Now you can simply insert an element at the end of the list by using the append method. So now let me add Let me add the percentage of the student. Uh, let's simply give uh, 78. Now let's rerun this. So it has been added. Now let's try to add one more element here. Comma 67. So let's run this and see. append takes append takes exactly one argument so on using the append method you will only be able to add only one element at a time so a series of elements can be added to a list by using the extend method so here is how i do it mark list dot extend of let's add two of his hobbies reading comma singing let's run this as you just saw the hobbies has been added and remember to enclose the elements within square brackets while using extend method and guys if you'd like to access the name of the student you can do it by using the slicing operator so let me show you how to do it in the print statement use the list name followed by square brackets so we have the name of the student at the zeroth index so let's give zero now now let's run and check we got the name of the student and similarly if you'd like to access a series of elements then you can do it by specifying the start and end value of the series so here Let's try to access only the marks of the student. So let me give 2 is to 7. So let's run this. If you look at this, although I gave 2 is to 7, that is 6 values, it has written only 5 values. That is because the last element is always neglected in Python. And similarly, you can use the slicing operator in many different ways. So here, now I'll remove this uh, 7 and 
run it so it has displayed from 2 till the end of the list and now let me remove this 2 also it has displayed the whole list so that's how you can access the elements in list using slicing operator now suppose if you'd like to access only the last element of the list one way you can do it is by counting the elements from first till last and then access the last element using the last count. So counting can be easier in case of smaller list. But in case of huge list, you can simply access the last element this way. Mark list of minus one. Like you can see, we got the last element of the list by simply specifying minus 1. That is because Python supports negative indexing, where indexing starts from minus 1 when counted backwards. So that's how you can access elements of a list using the slicing operator. And guys, just like inserting and accessing, you can also remove elements of a list by using the remove method. So let's see how to do it. Mark list dot remove of um, seventy eight print mark list. Let's run and check. So here, if you observe, the remove method is used to remove only the first occurrence of the element. And guys, there is also another method to remove elements of a list. mark list dot pop let's uh, remove the let's try to remove the department of the student uh, which is at the index one so it has removed the department of the student according to the index given now let's uh, remove the index also mm. run it so here if you observe it has removed the last element of the list and there is also another method to delete the whole list del followed by the name of the list so it shows name error because the list has been deleted and guys, you can perform manipulations on list such as concatenation, sorting, reversing and much more. So now let's see how to perform all those. Two different lists can be concatenated using the plus operator. Say for example, now let me remove this. Consider the contact information of the student. Contact is equal to, let me give the phone number. comma his location comma his pin code now let's concat this with the mark list mark list plus contact now let's try to print this concat list So two lists have been concatenated using the plus operator. Now list sorting. List can be easily sorted in ascending or descending order using the sort method. So now let me create a simple list a is equal to 5 comma 2 comma 1 comma 4 comma 7 comma 8 comma 3. A dot sort of. print a now let's run this so it has been sorted in ascending order suppose if you'd like to sort the list in descending order then it can be done by using the reverse method reverse is equal to 
true. So let's run and check this. So it has been reversed and display the numbers in descending order. And guys, you can even reverse a list by simply using the reverse method. A dot reverse of. So it has been reversed. Another way in which you can reverse a list is by using the negative indexing. Print of A of minus 1. So it has reversed the list using negative indexing. Normally, we are used to specify only the start and end value while using the slicing operator. But the basic idea of how actually slicing works is start colon, stop colon, step. So here, the start and stop value are left empty and I've specified only the step value that is minus one, which means it starts from backwards as minus one denotes negative indexing. And also, since I've not mentioned the stop value, it will display all the elements. Now in this list, if you'd like to search for a particular element, say four, uh, let's declare n is equal to four, you can do it by using a search algorithm. So let's now try to do it by using linear search. Linear search is simple. Basically, it starts a search from the leftmost element of the list and then compares n, that is 4, with each of the elements. So now let's create a function to define the search and pass list as well as the number as arguments to it. So now, def search. Let's pass, let's pass this list that is a comma n and inside this let's introduce a for loop for i in range that runs through all of the elements. len that is the length of the list and in here Let's introduce an if condition if a of i is equal to n then written true. So here we have to give double equal to and now let's define the main function if search of so let's pass list as well as the number so if this function returns true then print element found else print element not found so now Let's run this element found because 4 is present in the list. So that's how it works. And guys, there's also another method in which you can create list in an efficient manner called as list comprehension. For example, if you'd like to generate squares of the numbers from 1 to 10, one way you can do it is by using for loops. So now for i in range and in here let me give 11 so that it returns 10 numbers and print i into i to print the squares of the number. So it has written all the squares of the number. 
So, this can be written in just a single line using list comprehension. Expression for member in iterable. So, this is the basic syntax of list comprehension where I will now replace this expression with i into i for member that is i in iterable that is range of 11. Now, let us print this print print of Now, let me run this. So, that is how simple it is. You can even add conditionals in list comprehensions. Say for example, if you would like to generate the squares of even numbers from 1 to 10, you can do it by using an if condition. So, now i into i for i in range of 11 if i modulo 2 is equal to 0. So, this is the condition to check for even numbers. Now, let us run this. So, here we got the square of even numbers from 1 to 10. So, with this we can understand that list comprehension acts as a single tool which can be used in many different situations. And apart from list creation, it can also be used for mapping and filtering. So that's all for today. We'll be learning about next collection type in the next tutorial. Until then, stay tuned and see you all in the next. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.